Hi, in this video, we are going to continue our discussion of parabolas. We'll start off with some questions that will help you recap what we did in the previous videos. So we have done tangents and normals and basic equations for tangents and normals. So let's start with some problems on those and then we'll go with the theory that is remaining. So the first question is this one. Find the equation of the tangent and normal at 4 comma 3 by 2 on the parabola. The equation is given as x square minus 4x minus 8y plus 12 equals 0. So we saw in the previous class that whenever we have a general conic and the point is given, we can write the equation of the tangent very easily by replacing x square with x x1, y square with y y1, 2x with x plus x1, 2y with y plus y1, and 2xy with x1y plus xy1. Here, obviously, x1y1 is the point at which we want to make the tangent, right? So our point here in this question is 4 comma 3 by 2. So x1 is 4 and y1 is 3 by 2. So let's do these replacements in the general equation of the parabola. We'll get x x1 minus 2 times x plus x1 minus 4 times y plus y1. And the constant term is unchanged. And this should be my equation of the tangent. Now putting the value of x1 as 4 and y1 as 3 by 2, we get 4x minus 2 times x plus 4 minus 4 times y plus 3 by 2 plus 12 is equal to 0. So this becomes 2x and minus 4y. Here is a minus 8 plus 12 is plus 4 and there is a minus 6. So it is minus 2 is equal to 0. So the equation of the tangent is coming as x minus 2y minus 1 is equal to 0. Right? Once we have the equation of the tangent, the normal will obviously be perpendicular to this. So what we can see is the slope of the tangent here is 1 by 2. So the slope of the normal will be minus 2. Equation of the normal will be y minus 3 by 2 from this point is equal to minus 2 x minus 4. Right. So this becomes y minus 3 by 2 is equal to minus 2x plus 8. You get 2x plus 5 is equal to 8 plus 3 by 2. So that becomes basically 19 by 2. Right. So this becomes your equation of the normal. I hope you remember the stuff that we discussed in the last class. So this is coming from there itself. Let's look at the second problem. Alpha and beta are the angles made by two tangents to the parabola y square is equal to 4ax with, the, with its axis with its axis. Find the locus of their point of intersection. Find the locus of their point of intersection. If cot alpha plus cot beta is equal to P, so first of all, let's try to understand what this question means. Alpha and beta are the angles made by the two tangents to this parabola with its axis. So basically the tangents are making angles with the axis of the parabola. And what is the axis of this parabola? It is y is equal to zero, which is the x axis basically. So alpha and beta are the angles made by the two tangents with the x axis. So basically that means we know slopes of the two tangents slopes of the two tangent lines. And what are the slopes? The slopes will be m1 is tan alpha and m2 is tan beta. This is the information that we get from the first line, right? 
Now the question is asking, find the locus of their point of intersection. By their, he means the in point of intersection of the two tangents, right? If cot alpha plus cot beta is equal to P, right? So we want to find the locus of the point of intersection of the two tangents when cot alpha plus cot beta is equal to P, right? So let's think about the tangent equation. If we have a parabola y square is equal to 4ax, the standard tangent equation written in the form of slope is y is equal to mx plus a by n, right? Now, if both the tangents are coming from the same point, obviously they must intersect at the point, right? Let's say this is tangent 1 with slope m1, this is tangent 2 with slope m2. They must intersect at this point. We have to find the locus of this point. So let's call it h comma k. And we'll say that h comma k is the point of intersection of both tangents. So it must lie on this line, right? So you can say k is equal to mh plus a by m. And making it a quadratic in m, you can write it as mk is equal to m square h plus a. So you're getting m square h minus mk plus a equals zero. This is a quadratic in M, which represents the two slopes and the two tangent lines, which pass through H comma K, right? Obviously from this quadratic, we can see that M1, M2 product of the roots is A by H and M1 plus M2, sum of the roots is minus of B. So K by H, right? We are getting A by H and K by H as our product and sum of the roots, right? Now, Remember, here we have cot alpha plus cot beta is equal to P. So therefore, this is what? 1 by tan alpha plus 1 by tan beta is equal to P. So basically, we have the condition 1 by M1 plus 1 by M2 is equal to P, which means M1, M2 by M1 plus M2. I have done a mistake here. It is obviously M1 plus M2 by M1, M2 m1 plus m2 by m1 m2 is equal to p. This is coming from the condition given in the problem itself. And now that I know m1 m2 is a by h and m1 plus m2 is k by h, I can put that there. So I get k by h divided by a by h is equal to p. So obviously h h will get cancelled and you'll get k by a is equal to p. k is equal to a p, right? Now notice that k represents the y-coordinate of our point whose locus we want. So if you replace h and k as x and y, you will get the locus. So you're getting locus is y is equal to ap. y is equal to ap becomes the locus of the point of intersection of the tangents if cot alpha plus cot beta is equal to p. So go through the solution once more, see what we have done, how we got to the point where we got the answer, right? There are two, three steps involved. They are pretty easy only. You need to pause the video and try to think about it yourself and solve it yourself. You will get the idea. Okay, we'll go to the next problem. This question says, the normals, from P comma zero drawn to the parabola drawn to Y square is equal to eight X. One of them is the X axis. One of them is the X axis. If the remaining two normals are perpendicular, if the remaining two normals are perpendicular, find P. Okay, so basically there are three normals that are drawn from a particular point P comma zero to this parabola. Right, One of the normals is the x-axis and the remaining two, two normals are perpendicular, right? So when we have a general parabola 
y square is equal to 4ax. The equation of the normal in terms of slope we saw in the previous class was y is equal to mx minus 2am minus am cube. In this particular case, a is equal to 2 for us because y square is 8x. So our equation of the normal becomes y is equal to mx minus 4m minus 2m cube. This is the equation of our normal. And the question has said that all of these normals are drawn from p comma 0. So we can say p comma 0 lies on these normals. So obviously p comma 0 will satisfy this equation. So we'll put that there x is equal to p and y is equal to 0. So you're getting 0 is equal to pm minus 4m minus 2m cube, right? So basically what we are getting is 2m cube plus 4 minus p times m is equal to 0, right? When you simplify this, you can realize that m is a common factor and you get 2m square plus 4 minus p is equal to 0. And notice that you get m is equal to 0 as one of the solutions. If m is equal to 0, we mean that the slope of that normal is 0. And that should have happened because one of the normals was the x-axis, right? That is the normal which is the x-axis because slope of x-axis is obviously 0, right? Now, the other normal should come from this quadratic factor. So we are getting m square is equal to p minus 4 by 2 for the other two normals. So m1 and m2 are roots of the equation and m square is equal to this. So obviously p minus 4 by 2 should be equal to negative 1. Why? Because they had said that the remaining two normals are perpendicular. So m1, m2 product is equal to minus 1, right? And we have m1 square is equal to this and m2 square is equal to this. m1 square satisfies this equation and m2 square also satisfies this equation. That is the meaning of saying that m1, m2 will satisfy this equation. So from here we get that m1 square, m2 square should be p minus 4 by 2 whole square and that should be equal to 1. So p minus 4 by 2 whole square should be minus 1 square, which is 1. You're getting p minus 4 whole square is equal to 4. And from here we get plus minus 2 here and p will be equal to either 6 or it will be equal to 4. 4 minus 2, so 2. So p can be 6 or p can be 2, right? Those are the two possible values for p that are coming from here, right? Okay. So we use the equation of the normal to find the answer here. We said that the point p comma 0 must lie on the equation of the normal and then there must be three different roots. So that is what we did here. Let's look at the next problem. It says show that the locus of the point of intersection of the point of intersection of perpendicular tangents perpendicular tangents to the parabola y square is equal to 4ax is the directrix is the directrix x plus a equals 0. So actually this is an important property that everyone must be aware of. The property says that any two perpendicular tangents will always intersect on the directrix. So Basically what it means is if you have a parabola like this and the directrix is here, from any point on the directrix, if you try to draw two tangents to the parabola, the angle between the tangents will be 90 degree always. So the directrix line is the locus of the point of intersection of perpendicular tangents drawn to the parabola. And that is what we want to prove here. Okay. So let's try to do this in this way, let's say P x1 y1 is the point 
from where two tangents are drawn to y square is equal to 4ax. And we'll do the same step that we have already done in the previous problem. We will say that the tangents will be of the form y is equal to mx plus a by m, but they must pass through x1, y1. x1, y1 lies on them. So x1, y1 we'll put here, we'll say y1 is equal to mx1 plus a by m, and we'll make it a quadratic in m. So we'll get m square x1 minus m y1 plus a is equal to zero. This is a quadratic in m which represents the two different slopes of the tangents drawn from the point x1 y1 to the parabola y square is equal to 4ax, right? So therefore, since the two tangents are supposed to be perpendicular, we can say product of the slopes m1, m2 should be minus one, but m1, m2 here is what? m1, m2 is equal to a by x1, right? So we are getting a by x1 should be equal to minus one, which means x1 is equal to minus a, which means x1 plus a should be equal to zero. That is the condition for perpendicular tangents to be drawn from p x1, y1 to the parabola. Now, in order to get the locus of p, we will replace x1 with x and we'll say x plus a is equal to zero is the equation of the locus. And this actually turns out to be the directrix line for this parable. So that finishes off our proof. You should be very comfortable with these steps here. This is the key idea, how to take a point, draw, write the equation of a tangent, put the point in that equation and get a quadratic in M, right? And on the basis of that, only we are solving so many problems. So you should be familiar with that step. Okay. <clears throat> Let's look at another problem. Question number five. Show that the equation of the common tangent to the circle x square plus y square is equal to 2a square and the parabola and the parabola y square is equal to 8ax is y is equal to plus minus x plus 2a. Okay. This is a question that has appeared in mains multiple times, twice at least. So very common sort of a question where you have to find the equation of common tangent to two different curves, right? So Let's look at a tangent equation to this parabola. So tangent equation to this parabola will be y is equal to mx plus a by m. But instead of a here, you notice this is not 4a, it's 2a, 2 times 4a, right? So we'll say 2a by m. This is the equation of tangent to parabola. Right? Now, this equation is also a tangent to a circle, also tangent to the circle. And you should know from basic circle properties that if any line is tangent to the circle, then you can say that the length of the perpendicular from the center to that line, this length, the perpendicular length from center of the circle to that line, should be equal to the radius of the circle. Basically, perpendicular should be equal to the radius. Then only it will be tangent. If the length of the perpendicular is greater than the radius, the line is not even touching the circle. And if it is lesser than the radius, then the line is not a tangent, but it is a secant line or a chord, right? So our line is this, and we have to make it a tangent to the circle. Notice that the circle is center is 0, 0, and radius is root 2 a. Right. So what I will say is the length of perpendicular from 0, 0 to this line should be equal to root 2a. Right. So let's find the length of the perpendicular from standard straight lines theory. We'll get 0 minus m into 0 minus 2a by m mod by root over 1 plus m square should be equal to root 2a 
that is the radius of the circle. So squaring both sides, we will get 4a square by m square here divided by 1 plus m square here is equal to 2a square, right? And from here, we will get the equation 4a square by m square into 1 plus m square is equal to 2a square. And this cancels with a 2 and you're getting m square to 1 plus m square is equal to 2. Basically, m power 4 plus m square minus 2 is 0. m power 4 plus 2m square minus m square minus 2 is 0. So we can take m square common m square plus 2 minus 1 common m square plus 2 is 0. And we are getting the quadratic basically m square minus 1 times m square plus 2 is 0. Obviously m square plus 2 can never be 0. So m square is equal to 1 and m is equal to plus minus 1. Right? So the equation of our tangent will be m is equal to plus minus 1. So we'll get y is equal to x plus 2a or y is equal to minus x minus 2a. And notice that is what we needed to prove. This equation is plus minus x plus 2a, which will be x plus 2a or minus x minus 2a, right? So we are using the equation of tangent to the parabola and using the property that a line tangent to the circle will always be at a distance of radius from the center of the circle, right? Okay, let's move on to the next problem. This says, if a chord of the parabola y square is equal to 4ax touches the parabola y square is equal to 4bx show that the tangents at its extremities meet on the parabola y, b y square is equal to 4 a square x. Okay, so first we have to understand what this problem is saying. So we have a chord of a parabola, this one, first parabola, and that chord is actually touching a second parabola. Y square is equal to 4 bx, right? So that chord is tangent to a second parabola basically, right? Okay. And show that the tangents at its extremities, its extremities means chords extremities, right? Meet on the parabola. So we have to basically show that the tangents at the end points of the chord are meeting on this parabola. So basically point of intersection of tangents at the end points of our chord. That point of intersection, if you can find the locus of that point, locus of this point, that has to be shown to be this third equation, right? So understand, try to focus on the meaning of the problem first. Understand what you are being asked. We have a chord of a parabola. That chord is tangent to the second parabola. But now we have to find the locus of the point of intersection of tangents drawn at the end points of the chord to the first parabola. And that locus apparently is a third equation, which is also a parabola, right? So let's think about how you will do this problem. Let's say this is my first parabola, y square is equal to 4ax. And this is my chord QR, right? Our job is to find locus of the tangents at the extremities of this chord. These are my tangent lines. And this is my point, let's say P, which is x1, y1. 
this is the point of intersection of the tangents at the extremities of this chord, right? I have to find locus of P, okay? Now, think about it. The chord equation, how do we write the chord equation? QR equation we have to write because we need to say that the chord touches this parabola, right? Chord QR touches y square is equal to 4 dx. Now, one way which would not be the correct way to do this problem would be to try to say this point is x2, y2, this point is x3, y3 and find the equation of the chord in here. But that will be annoying because you are introducing two new variables to the question. Because nobody has told you what x and uh, what q and r is, right? We have not been said anything about that. So if, if it, it would be nicer if we can represent this line equation using information that was already given in the problem and as few new things as possible, right? So can you see that if P is the point from where tangents are drawn to the parabola at Q and R, then this QR is also called chord of contact. We saw that in the theory in the last class that chord of contact is this chord drawn between the points of contact of two tangents, right? So if QR is chord of contact, we can write equation of chord of contact. And that is written by trying to write the tangent equation from the point P x1 y1 to the parabola y square is equal to 4 ax. So this becomes y y1 is equal to 2 ax plus x1. So notice here that the only unknowns we have introduced are x1 y1, which is anyway the locus that we need to find later, right? And our chord equation we have gotten y y1 is equal to 2 ax plus x1. This is the equation of the chord of contact from point x1, y1, right? Now we can say that this line QR, which is y, y1 is equal to 2a x plus x1, touches the second parabola, touches y square is equal to 4bx, right? How does a line touch a parabola? The way it can touch a parabola is if you solve the line, solve this line and this, what you will have is an equation where the discriminant is zero. Since this line is tangent to this, there will be only one point of contact, right? So the discriminant will be zero. So let's do that solution. We get here y square y1 square is equal to 4a square x plus x1 whole square. I'm just squaring this. And I'm going to use y square is equal to 4bx here to try to solve this equation. 4bx into y1 square is equal to 4a square x plus x1 whole square, right? Okay, now 4 can get cancelled here and we are getting b y1 square x on this side is equal to a square x square plus 2x1 x plus x1 square, right? So this quadratic is a square x square plus 2a x1 x minus b y1 square x plus a square x1 square equals 0, right? This is my quadratic 2a x1 minus b y1 square x plus a square x square plus a square x1 square. Now this quadratic has to have a real and equal roots. So discriminant should be zero. So what I can say is this b square minus 4ac should be equal to zero, right? So what I will do is 2a x1 minus b y1 square whole square minus four times a square multiplied by a square x1 square should be equal to zero. So I get 4a square x1 square plus b square y1 power 4 minus 4ab x1 y1 square minus 4a power 4 x1 square is equal to 0, right? Correct.
I have made a mistake here because this term will have a two a square here, a square, a square. And this there basically becomes a power four. And therefore it cancels here with this. And we are getting this equation. So we are getting b square y1 power 4 is equal to 4ab x1 y1 square. So y1 square can get cancelled and you have y1 square is equal to b square will come down here. It will become 4a by b x1. And this is the condition for the line qr to be tangent to this parabola. How did we get this condition? We solved the line with the parabola equation and we said that the equation should have only real and equal roots. If it has unequal roots, it will not be a tangent, it will be a secant, right? And now that we are getting a condition involving x1 and y1, remember that we had to find locus of p x1 y1. So our required locus will come when we replace x1 and y1 with y and x, we get y square is equal to 4a by b into x. And that is a third parabola. And that is what we wanted to prove in the problem, right? So hopefully you have understood how we are applying the concepts we learned in the previous class in solving these problems. Now we'll go on to the next part of the theory, which is very important and it makes questions on parabola super easy, which is known as the parametric representation. Parametric equations of the parabola. So what is this parametric representation? If you have a standard parabola y square is equal to 4ax, instead of taking a general point x1, y1, we can also take a point at squared comma 2at. Here, t is a parameter or a variable. And notice that at square comma 2at will always satisfy this equation because you will get 2at whole square on left hand side and 4a times at square on the right hand side. Notice that these are same. Both sides are matching, right? So you can take x and y as at square and 2at and this will be the general parametric representation of a point on the parabola, right? What is the advantage of this parametric representation? Notice that earlier we had to take two new variables, x1 and y1 to represent one single point on the parabola, right? However, here, when we use parametric form, we are not taking two different variables, x1, y1. We have only one variable, which is t. So what is the advantage? Advantage is we are reducing the number of variables in our problem, right? If the number of variables in our problem is lesser, the problem will be easier to do, right? So I will show you how to write the parametric representation for different, different forms. So if the parabola has form y square is equal to 4ax, we just saw that the point can be written as at square comma 2at. If the parabola had a form y square is equal to minus 4ax, in that case, I would say the point will be written as minus 80 square comma 280. These are all obvious things. I will just list them out so that you are not confused. X square is equal to 4ay. The point would be instead of y, we will put 80 square. So you'll get 280 comma 80 square here, right? And similarly, x square is equal to minus 4ay. You can do minus 280. No, you can do 280 and minus 80 square, right? We are just trying to make the equations work by using a single parameter t. If you have an equation like this, y minus k whole square is equal to 4a x minus h whole square. Technically, we are doing the same thing. We are saying x minus h is our 80 square and y minus k is our 280. Technically, the substitution that you have to write is x is equal to h plus 80 square and y is equal to k plus 280. Here, h and k are the uh, constants which represents the coordinates of the vertex because this parabola is a shifted parabola. The vertex is no longer the origin, but it is at a slightly displaced position, right? So this is the general way in which we use parameters. Now, what I want to show you is a lot of results 
involving parametric equations, which makes your life easier. So the first one is equation of chords, chord joining two points and the points will be called by their parameters t1 and t2 on y square is equal to 4ax. Here you have to understand that t1 means the point a t1 square 2 a t1 and t2 means what point a t2 square 2 a t2. Right? And the equation of the chord can be done by simple y minus 2 a t1 by is equal to 2 a t2 minus 2 a t1 by a t2 square minus a t1 square x minus a t1 square. This is the simple straight line equation joining these two points, right? This can be simplified nicely. You will be able to say that a can cancel throughout. 2 is common and t2 minus t1 will later cancel with t2 square minus t1 square x minus a t1 square y minus 2 a t1. So the equation of chord is y minus 2 a t1 is equal to 2 by t1 plus t2 x minus a t1 square. You don't need to remember this equation because it's a simple straight line equation joining two points. What you should remember is that the slope of the chord is this. It will be convenient if you remember that slope of chord joining t1 and t2 is 2 by t1 plus t2. So that you don't have to do this simplification every time. right? Later when you solve enough problems, all of this becomes super obvious. Okay. Now the second thing is, how do we characterize a focal chord? So we have the same chord joining T1 and T2 points, but the chord passes through the focus. Passes through the focus. So if the parabola was y square is equal to 4ax, our focus is the point a comma 0. And if you recall, the chord equation was y minus 2 at 1 is equal to 2 by t1 plus t2 x minus a t1 square. And now we can say that a comma 0 lies on this line, lies on this because it is passing through the focus. So when you put a comma 0 here, we'll get minus 2 at 1 here is equal to 2 by t1 plus t2. And here a minus this, so a common 1 minus t1 square. And now this a and this 2 can cancel this 2 and this a. We get minus t1 into t1 plus t2 is equal to 1 minus t1 square. Simplifying this, we get minus t1 square minus t1 t2 is equal to 1 minus t1 square t1 square t1 square gets cancelled and we get t1 t2 is equal to minus 1. This is a very important condition. It says that if there is a focal chord, then the endpoints of the chord t1 and t2 will be such that t1 t2 will be minus 1. So if one point of the chord was p, which was a t1 square 2 a t1, the other point of a focal chord, the other end point of a focal chord would be a t2 square 2 a t2 but because t2 is equal to minus 1 by t1 this can be written as a by t1 square comma minus 2 a by t1 right this becomes your end point other point of a focal chord right okay so now what I will do is since we know the three two end points of a focal chord a t1 square 2 a t1 and the other point is a by t1 square and minus 2a by t1. These are the two endpoints of a focal chord. So what is the length of a focal chord? Length of focal chord. Let's calculate that length. That will come out to be the distance between this point and this point. So by distance formula, you will do it like this. a t1 square minus a by t1 square whole square plus 2a t1 minus minus so plus 2a by t1 whole square right so let's simplify this and see what comes from here here we get a square t1 power 4 plus a square by t1 power 4 minus 2a square notice t1 square and this get cancelled 
plus we have 4a square t1 square plus 4a square by t1 square and we have a plus 2 times this into this so that will become 8a square right correct so what we are getting actually i could have done a smarter thing here i didn't have to simplify it like this right i would simplify it in a much smarter way not like this so we can do it like this we have here a square common t square minus t1 square minus 1 by t1 square whole square plus here we have a square and 4 common 4 a square t1 plus 1 by t1 whole square right now what are the things i can take common here i can take a square common from both i can also take this factor common because this is what this is t1 plus 1 by t1 multiplied by t1 minus 1 by t1 and the whole thing is squared right so what comes out is a into t1 plus 1 by t1 and what remains inside is t1 minus 1 by t1 whole square plus 4. Now this is simple. This is actually t1 square plus 1 by t1 square minus 2 plus 4 which is t1 plus 1 by t1 whole square again. right? So finally that also comes out of the square and the length is becoming a t1 plus 1 by t1 whole square. This is coming as the length of a focal cord. If these two points are the end points of a focal cord, the length of the focal cord is this. So that is a useful result in certain problems. That's why I'm mentioning it here. Also, you can see that this term t1 plus 1 by t1 whole square is always going to be greater than or equal to 2, 2 square, right? Why? Because obviously by AM, GM, t1 plus 1 by t1 is greater than or equal to 2. So t1 plus 1 by t1 whole square is greater than or equal to 4. So length of focal cord is always greater than or equal to 4a and notice 4a was the length of latest rectum and what this means is the latest rectum is the shortest focal cord of a parabola right the smallest focal cord of a parabola is the focal cord which is the latest rectum which is perpendicular to the axis and that length is 4a every other focal cord will have bigger length right okay now, let's do some more properties. The fourth property is this. Show that the focal cord of the parabola y square is equal to 4ax which makes an angle alpha with the x-axis has length 4a times cosec square alpha. Okay. So we know that if p a t1 square 2 a t1 and q a t2 square 2 a t2 are the end points of a focal cord pq are end points of focal cord pq which makes which makes angle alpha with the x-axis then what is the slope of this focal cord? Tan alpha will be the slope and slope of any cord 
between two points is two by t one plus t two. So we know two by t one plus t two is equal to tan alpha. We always already saw that slope of a chord is two by t one plus t two, but we also know that this is not a normal chord. This is the focal chord. So therefore, t two is minus one by t one. So therefore, we can say tan alpha is equal to two by t one minus one by t one. Right. <laughs> So this is becoming 2t1 by t1 square minus 1. That is my tan alpha. Right? Great. We also know, we also know that the length of the focal cord, length of focal cord from the previous derivation is a times t1 plus 1 by t1 whole square, right? Okay. So if you want to think about this, this is the same as a times t1. And instead of 1 by t1, I can write it as minus t2, right? So t1 minus t2 whole square. And actually, it is better if I use t1 and t2 here. It will be simpler. So what I will say is t1 minus t2 whole square would be a times t1 plus t2 whole square minus 4 t1 t2, right? that will be equal to t1 minus t2 whole square. So now notice that t1 plus t2 is two by tan alpha, so two cot alpha. So what we are getting here is four cot square alpha minus four, and t1, t2 is minus one, so it is minus one. So we are getting four cot square alpha plus four, right? So this is a times four counts common, and you have one plus cot square alpha, which is cosec square alpha. So we are able to prove that the length of the focal cord that makes an angle alpha with the x-axis is 4a cos x square alpha. So this is also a useful result because if you know the angle that the focal cord makes with the x-axis, basically you know the slope of the focal cord. And then we can directly know the length of that focal cord also. If you don't want to remember it, you should know how to prove it. So it's not required to remember this result. You just need to know how to get it, right? Another property that is super nice is this one. Show that the semi latus rectum, semi latus rectum of the parabola is the harmonic mean between the segments of any focal cord between the segments of any focal cord. So what do I mean by segments of any focal cord? So if this is my parabola and this is my focus S a comma zero, this segment can be called as L1 and this segment can be called L2. And these are the segments of that focal cord. And let's say this point is P, this point is Q, right? So what we want to show is that the semi latus rectum, semi latus rectum is 2A, 4A is the latus rectum, is equal to the HM of the segments of the focal cord. So 2A should be basically 2 times SP times SQ by SP plus SQ. This is the HM of the segments of the focal cord, right? So basically 2 L1, L2 by L1 plus L2, right? So this is the result that I want to prove, right? Also notice that if I can prove this, then I will get that 4A or latest rectum is equal to 4 L1, L2 by L1 plus L2. If I know the segments of the focal cord, I can find out the latest rectum from here. So let's see how we will prove this. Again, it's not very difficult. What we will do is, we'll say P point is A T1 square 2 A T1. Q point is A T2 square 2 A T2. And since it's a focal cord, we know T1 T2 is minus one. Let's find out what is SP. SP is the focal distance of point P 
we have seen earlier as a property that focal distance of a point on the parabola is a plus x1, right? Remember this property we had done in the first or second class. So point of the parabola is p, then focal distance is a plus the x coordinate of p is a t1 squared. So a plus a t1 squared. Similarly, sq becomes a times 1 plus t2 squared, right? So if SP and SQ are these, we can now calculate what is L1, L2 by L1 plus L2, right? So let's do that. We can say 1 by SP is equal to 1 by A1 plus T1 square. And 1 by SQ is 1 by A1 plus T2 square. So what is 1 by SP plus 1 by SQ? Let's do it on the next screen. 1 by SP plus 1 by SQ is 1 by A common. It is 1 by 1 plus T1 square plus 1 by 1 plus T2 square. So this becomes in on the top it is 1 by T1 square plus T2 square plus 1. And this is 1 by A here, right? So what we are getting on top is right this expression but we also know that t1 t2 is minus 1 so t2 is equal to minus 1 by t1 now i'll use that here so you get 1 plus t1 square plus 1 by t1 square plus 1 and in the denominator what am i getting 1 plus t1 squared plus t2 squared plus t1 squared t2 squared. t1 squared t2 squared is going to be equal to 1. And this is going to be 1 by t1 squared. So notice that the top part and the this part all cancel out. They are exactly the same thing. You're getting 1 plus t1 squared plus 1 by t1 squared plus 1. So this is 1. So you're getting 1 by sp plus 1 by sq is equal to 1 by a, which was basically what I wanted to show. This is what I have gotten. This is what I wanted to show because you are getting L1, L2 by L1 plus L2 is equal to A, right? So that is the property of a focal cord that you should know. And if you don't remember it, it's fine. You can prove it whenever required. Okay. The next point that I wanted to see was equation of tangent in parametric form. So if the tangent to the parabola has been drawn at a point at square comma 2at and the parabola is y square is equal to 4ax, I can use the normal method and I can say y y1 is equal to 2ax plus x1. This is my equation of the tangent but y1 is 2at now is equal to 2a x plus a t square. So 2a gets cancelled here and you get the equation t y is equal to x plus a t square. That is the equation of tangent to the parabola at this parametric point to the standard parabola. You need to remember this equation. It's a super important one. So equation of tangent in parametric form is this. Now point of intersection point of intersection of two tangents at t1 and t2. So if the parabola is y square is equal to 4ax, the equation of the first tangent is t1y is x plus a t1 square. And equation of second tangent is t2y is x plus a t2 square. All we have to do is solve these two equations. So solving basically means subtracting, you'll get t1 minus t2y is equal to a t1 square minus t2 square. And therefore you solve for y as a t1 plus t2. If you put this back in any one equation, you will get x is equal to minus a, x is equal to a t1 t2. So from here, we deduce that the point of intersection of two tangents are a t1 t2, a t1 plus t2. This is also a result that is so useful 
because in many problems we encounter a situation where we have to find the point of intersection of the tangents. So try to remember this result, it's very important. Then we come to equation of normal to the parabola at the point. Equation of normal to parabola at t. So remember the tangent equation had come as ty is equal to x plus at square. And this was at the point at square comma 280. So obviously from here we can see that the slope of tangent, slope of tangent is clearly 1 over t. So slope of normal would be minus t. And if the slope of normal is minus t, the equation of normal at this point would be y minus 2at is equal to minus t x minus at square, right? So you'll get y minus 2at is equal to minus tx plus at cube. And this can be written like this, tx plus y is equal to 2at plus at cube. And this is the form which you have to remember. This is the equation of normal to the parabola in parametric form at point t, right? Again, super important result and you need to remember it. You can also find now point of intersection of two normals to a parabola. I will leave that to you. There is one normal here. This is the normal t1x plus y is equal to 2at1 plus at1 cube. And the other normal will be t2x plus y is equal to 2at2 plus at2 cube. So solving this equation, you will be able to find the point of intersection of two normals to the parabola. I would recommend that you find that and remember that as well. Remember that the point of intersection of tangents came out to be at1 t2 and at1 plus t2, right? Similarly, the point of intersection of normals will also come out to be in a form like that, right? Try to find that yourself. The next property that I wanted to show you was this one. The normal at, one second, yeah, ninth one. The normal at t1 on y square is equal to 4ax meets the curve meets the curve again at t2. Then you can prove that t2 is equal to minus t1 minus 2 by t1. So basically this says that if I have a parabola like this and I have a point here t1 the tangent here will be like this, the normal here would be like this, and the normal here might intersect the curve again at t2. I am able to find t2 in terms of t1. There is a connection between t2 and t1, and that is what we are trying to find out, right? So equation of normal at t1 is what? It is t1x plus y is equal to 2at1 plus at1 cube. This is the equation of the normal. And this passes through the point T2 and T2 point is what? A T2 square comma 2 A T2. So this point should lie on the normal. So we'll get T1 into A T2 square plus 2 A T2 is equal to 2 A T1 plus A T1 cube, right? So now we need to solve this equation. Uh, notice that, right. We will say a t1 t2 square minus a t1 cube is equal to 2a t1 minus 2a t2. So taking common stuff, first of all, I can cancel a from everywhere. And I can take t1 common. I get t2 square minus t1 square is equal to 2 times t1 minus t2. And t1 minus t2 will cancel here with a factor and it will look a minus t1 t1 plus t2 is equal to 2. 
and that's it because we get t1 plus t2 is equal to minus 2 by t1. So therefore t2 is equal to minus t1 minus 2 by t1. So it's a very simple proof, but you don't have time for these proofs in the exam. So you need to remember that if a normal cuts the parabola again at a point, that point can be found on the basis of the initial parametric point, right? Okay. Now, another final theorem that I wanted to show today was this one. This says a tangent at one end of a focal chord is parallel, is parallel to the normal at the other end. And properties like this become super easy if you think about parametric form. So notice that we are talking about a focal chord. So if this point is T1, this is minus one by T1, right? T2, T2 is minus one by T1. So tangent at this point, tangent at one end of a focal chord would be T1Y is equal to X plus A T1 square, right? That is the equation of tangent in parametric form. And what is the equation of normal at this end, which is T2 end? It would be T2 X plus Y is equal to 2 A T2 plus A T2 Q. This is the equation of normal at the other end. So let's see if we want to prove that tangent at one end is parallel to the normal at the other end. All we have to think about is the slope of this tangent. Slope of this tangent is 1 by T1. What is the slope of this normal? It is minus T2. So we have to show that 1 by T1 is equal to minus T2. But that is true anyway because T1, T2 is minus 1. This is the same condition as this chord being a focal chord, right? T1, T2 is minus 1. Therefore, 1 by T1 is equal to minus T2. And therefore, tangent at one end of a focal chord is parallel to the normal at the other end. Right. So these are some basic properties that are derived from the fact that we know the parametric form of a parabola. Hopefully you have understood all the stuff that I have discussed today. I will come back in a future video with some more example problems based on this and also some more slightly advanced properties for a parabola. So stay tuned for that one. If you like the content, please subscribe to the channel and share it with your friends. All your support is most welcome and I'll see you next time.